Well, we're getting close to that time of year, folks, where the lawn needs another dumping of sand to get a little bit more smoother. But to do that, I need some more tools this year. So today on Budget Lawns, we're building our very own lawn leveling rake. You don't want to miss this one. Hey everyone, I appreciate you coming back for another episode of Budget Lawns. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed already. If you are not, please consider doing so down below. If you find any of my videos useful, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, leave me a comment, and tap the notification bell so you know every time I upload some new content. So if you've been following since last season, you may recall that I did a sand leveling project and scored a leveling drag mat on Facebook for only 30 bucks, a brand new one. So I got that last year and you know here on Budget Lawns that I don't go out and buy all the equipment all at once and break the bank. I just kind of slowly build up my arsenal and one thing I've had my eye on is a leveling rake but I can only find them in 36 and 48 inches. And I don't have a very big lawn. I just have trouble getting that drag mat and some of the smaller nooks and crannies. So I was hoping to find one for 24 inches and couldn't. So I thought, I'll just make one. And I know what everyone's thinking. Oh, here we go again. Another DIY lawn leveling rake video. We've seen those before because there are some other really good ones out there. Uh, Don's Lawns has one. I think Lawn Daddy Dread has one as well. So go check those out if you haven't seen theirs. But this one's going to be a little bit different. And I think you'll find, whether you use this option or one of theirs, you'll find one that will best suit your needs. So without further ado, let's get straight into the build. You're going to need four 24-inch stakes. These are actually rebar pins. They've already got the holes drilled in them for you. We're going to attach those using three 12-inch straps. Hardware, one and a half inch. Number eight screws with the number eight nuts as well as the number eight lock washers. Once we've got those attached, we'll move on to the handle. And for this one, we're using a wood pole. We will use three hole angles, two of them a three-quarter T, as well as a four-inch, five-sixteenths tap bolt with the five-sixteenth nut and the five-sixteenth lock washer. That will take care of our attachment to the mechanism itself. Now, keep in mind that three-quarter washer, I'll get back to that. First, you wanna lay your four pins out and start putting those number eight machine screws through the holes you wanna Start on the very far right and then skip one moving to the left and then go further down all the way into the very far end on the left. And here I'm just working each of those machine screws. Those are the one and a half inch screws through the holes. I want to make sure that they're lining up for each bar as I work my way down. Because once I get all the screws in there and they're all lining up, that's when we're going to put those 12 inch straps over those screws and they'll line up just right. It was a little bit, you know, tedious getting this all lined up, but once you get the first one done, uh, everything after that's all gravy. You just gotta make sure that you have all these strap turned in the right direction. Line those holes up. You can see there's several different holes in there, but the way I've got this figured, they'll all line up just perfectly on each strap for the holes you want to use at the correct distance. So you get one down and the other two after that aren't a problem whatsoever. And once we get all of our straps on, we want to put those two, uh, three hole angles on there. And that's going to be the uh, two pieces that we're going to attach the handle to. And once I've got all that in place, now I'm just taking the 5 sixteenths no, not the uh, 5 16th, the number 8 washers. Uh, you'll, you'll be able to tell that the holes on the 
three hole angles are a little bit bigger. So what I'm doing here is I'm just stacking three of the number eight washers in there. Really, I, you know, I don't know that it's going to make much difference, but I went ahead and did it anyways, uh, just to get that hole filled up and kind of build up since it's a little bit thicker there than the strap on the far end that doesn't have the three hole angles on it. So I'm just putting three of the number eight washers in each of those holes. And then of course, on all the other ones, I'm just using one washer. But once you get those three in there, that will bring those washers up to the level of that angle piece. That way, after we have all the washers on, we can start putting the nuts on there as well. So these little washers were kind of small, so they were a bit tricky for my fingers to work with. Um, but we got them on there. Now I'm just sticking the nuts on there. These are the number eight nuts. Um, I just bought the nuts and the machine screws all in like they were combo packs. Um, just getting those on there, screwed on by hand right now, really not going very far down on them. That's really all you need to do to get started. Um, just to uh, make sure you're getting each one of them on there. And then once I got them all on there, that's when I threw a level on there just to make sure I had everything kind of squared up in the position I wanted it. And that's when we started getting a little bit tighter with them. I didn't tighten them all the way here. Just kind of worked my way down each strap, tightening them almost all the way to the bottom. But I just wanted to get them relatively tight so I could get one last check on it to make sure it was set where I wanted to have it. And then once I realized I was where I wanted to be, that is when we made those final tightening adjustments and got that sucker locked down into place where it hopefully will be uh, for a very, very, very long time. I'm hoping I've got this design pretty sturdy. I really do think I have, have got you a good setup here. And once I got it all tightened down and in place, I wanted to just check to make sure that it was as tight as I wanted it. Because that did work there with the socket wrench just on the table. But I decided, you know what, I'll get down here on the, on the floor and put a screwdriver on the other side into the screws and then try and tighten it a little bit more. And uh, oops, um, I broke one of the screws off. Remember that hole, because this was kind of a fortunate accident. Really didn't need to have a screw there anyways, because that's where the handle's going to go. And speaking of the handle, here you've got your wood handle just take that metal piece off of that we don't need that what we're going to do is we're going to stick that wooden end down into our three-quarter t and this was a little bit of the tricky part but what you're going to find out and the reason why you want to stick around is because i try to do this as cheaply as possible for you but i've already upgraded mine to a different handle which i think is a much better option we'll go over that in just a minute but I just marked a hole uh, through the T on the wooden stick where I wanted to start screwing my hole. And from there, I just worked my way up, stair-stepping my way up through some of the bits so that I didn't go too much all at once and risk cracking the handle from the get-go. And I worked my way up. This is to the uh, quarter bit, just smaller than the 5 16 bolt. Got the bolt started in there. Now we're just going to work that sucker all the way through. And I went at this pretty slowly. I didn't want to go too quickly and crack that, that broomstick. And once I got it worked all the way through, that is when I breathed a bit of a sigh of relief. Um, and it was time to put the lock washer on there and then the nut and then get the final tighten down on this. Now, Again, this is the least expensive way to put a handle on this thing. Um, I wasn't completely sold on it over time for fear that that handle might crack and eventually break. But nonetheless, if you want to go the cheapest route, this is it for you because it worked just fine. We got her tightened down and pulled on, no movement, no cracking. There she goes on the floor and she is all finished up. What a beauty. 24 inch lawn leveling rake made right here in my garage. 
on a wet, nasty spring day. We'll be using this bad boy real soon. So, you may be asking, what did I do differently on the handle? I'll show you. There she is, folks. I don't know why I didn't do this in the beginning, but that right there is just a gas steel pipe threaded into the three-quarter T. And you may remember that three-quarter washer that I mentioned that I did not use for the wood handle. There it is on this one. Just squeezed it in there to get a little extra space filled up to tighten things up there for the mechanism to make this handle operable and operable it is this is going to be awesome <sighs> man i love it when a good plan comes together i really kind of wish i would have just done this in the first place i know i was trying to do it the least expensive way possible but seven dollars for the broom handle 20 bucks for this second option you go kind of from the pinto to the cadillac no worries about this new one breaking or failing on me this sucker is as tough as nails now this whole unit is made out of metal steel rock solid all right that's it folks I know a lot of you are probably saying, hey, I wish we could have seen a demo. That is coming. You really don't want to level a Bermuda lawn until it starts getting really hot out because if you do it when it's too cool, then guess what? You're going to be waiting forever for that to come back in. So I'm planning on doing another round of leveling with masonry sand coming up the middle of June when things really start to heat up. That way we can get filled back in and back to regular lawn care as soon as possible. So you'll be seeing that video along with this thing in action coming up right here on Budget Lawns in the very, very near future. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. We will see you in the next one. Take care.